Hello, and welcome to this video for Physics 132 that will go into calculating electric fields. So in a previous video, we've discussed what electric fields are and how we visualize electrical forces in terms of electrical fields. In this video, we're going to go into actually calculating them. So by the end of this video, what should you be able to do? You should know that the quantity G, 9.8 newtons per kilogram from 131, is a calculable quantity. And then you should be able to calculate the electric field from a given point charge. Just as with the introduction to electric fields video, we will be making use of gravity as an analogy in this video. So let's begin by calculating fields and thinking in terms of gravity using our experience from physics 131. So essentially the question we're looking to answer is, where does this 9.8 newtons per kilogram value of G come from? 9.8 newtons per kilogram is the strength of the gravitational field from the Earth at the surface of the Earth. So that's what this value is. If you, at the space station, which is just outside of the atmosphere, the value of G is a little bit smaller. It's about 9.7. So from this, we can conclude that the strength of the gravitational field depends upon distance. The further you are from the planet, the weaker the gravitational field. On the moon, on the other hand, the dominant gravitational field is the gravitational field not generated by the Earth, but generated by the moon, and has a value, as we saw in the previous video, of 1.6 newtons per kilogram. Near the surface of the sun, in comparison, the dominant gravitational field is from the sun and has a value of about 275 newtons per kilogram. From this, we can conclude that the strength of the gravitational field depends upon the mass of the object which is creating it. The moon is less massive than the Earth, so generates a weaker gravitational field. The sun is more massive than the Earth and generates a corresponding stronger gravitational field. It turns out that the strength of the gravitational field is actually calculable using this expression, g equals big G m over r squared, where m is the mass of the object, which, as we've already seen, is one of the things that g depends on. A more massive object will result in a larger gravitational field. It also depends upon the distance from the center, because as we've seen with the space station, the further away I get, the smaller the strength of the gravitational field. And then this big G quantity is just a constant of the universe, like the speed of light is a constant of the universe. And the value of this big G constant is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Now, you don't actually need to know this expression for the gravitational field. I'm just using it to sort of build up an analogy because we're more familiar with gravity. So it should make sense to us that more mass, more gravitational field. Further away, weaker gravitational field. And that's what this formula is saying. I will not, again, ask you to actually use it. But now let's look at that analogy and think about calculating electric fields. So just as with gravitational fields, the strength of the electric field depends upon three things. The amount of source, in this case, the amount of charge that's generating the electric field, not the amount of mass. And we indicate the amount of charge with the letter Q. Just as with gravitational fields, electric fields decrease with distance from the center of the charge. And there's also a constant. In fact, it's this epsilon naught constant, 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12, that we have seen before. In fact, when you go to write the formula, it's very, very similar to the formula for the strength of the gravitational field. The gravitational field, reminder, was some constant, mass over distance squared. Electrical field is some constant, charge over distance squared. I will ask you to use this particular equation. You'll notice that we have the electric field vector inside of absolute value bars. And what that's indicating to you is that this formula only tells you the strength of the magnetic field. It doesn't tell you the direction. As for the direction, electric fields point away from positive charges and towards negative charges. 
This will be discussed in a little bit more detail in your textbook. While the formulae for gravitational fields and electric fields appear very similar, again, I want to stress that you should keep in mind that electric fields and gravitational fields are completely different things. Electric fields transmit electrical forces, which act on anything with charge. Gravitational fields act on anything with mass. So an object with a mass and a charge will generate both a gravitational field and an electrical field. Let's take a moment to talk about the constant. So the constant up front in the electric field expression is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And some people will write this constant as k. And if you put in the value of epsilon naught as 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 and calculate out this value, you will see that 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is 9 times 10 to the ninth. In class, and in all of our examples, I will use 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And the reason for this is it will be easier in the long run. When we talk about materials and light waves, thinking in terms of epsilon naught will be much more straightforward. However, both epsilon naught and k are on your equation sheet. In fact, we have already seen the constant epsilon naught in one of our equations. The equation relating the amplitude of light to the intensity of light. That's the same epsilon naught. And in fact, looking ahead, this E in this equation stands for electric field. So this is already starting to tell us something that electric fields and light are going to be deeply connected in some interesting way that we'll talk about in our last unit. So let's move on and actually try to use this expression for calculating the electric fields and forces. So what is the strength of an electric field generated by an oxygen nucleus, which has eight protons in it, at a point P, a distance of 60 picometers, which is the covalent bond radius? There is absolutely nothing currently at the point P. We're going to ignore the effects of all the or you know, surrounding electrons, and just think about the nucleus for the moment. So we begin with our definition for the strength of the electric field. It is the charges within the nucleus that are generating this field. And inside the nucleus, we have eight protons. So we have eight times the charge on each proton, giving us a total charge of 1.28 times 10 to the minus 18 coulombs. We substitute this value into Q. We know the R is 60 picometers from the problem. And we plug in all of our numbers, and we get an electric field of 3.2 times 10 to the 12th newtons per coulomb. Think about this for a second. The strength of the gravitational field generated by the entire Earth is 10, essentially, newtons per kilogram. The gr electric fields inside of an atom are much, 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 much larger. Since we know that the nucleus is positively charged, we know that the electric field will point away from the source, as we've shown in this arrow. It's worth pointing out that this field is a real thing and exists regardless if there is something to experience it at P or not. So the oxygen nucleus will generate a field that surrounds it, which at point P has this value, respective of if there is actually an object at point P. Now let's see what happens when we put an object at point P. So we're going to go and add an electron at the point we've been talking about. We know the strength of the electric field, 3.2 times 10 to the 12 newtons per coulomb, as calculated in the last part. We know that the electron will feel a force QE, as discussed in a previous video. We know the charge of the electron is minus 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Substituting that in our value for electric field, we get a force of minus 
5.128 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons, where the negative sign means that the force is opposite the electric field. Then we can finally move on to calculating acceleration. We begin with Newton's second law, F equals ma. The only force present on this particular electron is the electrical force, 5.13 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons. We know the mass of the electron from our equation sheet, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And then we solve for the acceleration, and we get an enormous value. Remember, for comparison, accelerations in your everyday life are 10 meters per second squared, maybe 30 meters per second squared, and an acceleration of about 80 meters per second squared, you're blacking out. This electron is accelerating with an astronomically large acceleration. So to summarize, the electric field from a point charge can be calculated by this expression which depends upon the charge making the field, makes sense, and the distance from the charge to the point of interest, R. And it also depends upon this constant, epsilon naught, that you have already seen. This field exists regardless if there is something there to feel it or not. And the forces and fields in electricity we've already seen in the few examples are much, much bigger than gravitational forces. As sort of a reference point, say you have two electrons. The electrical repulsion between the two electrons is 10 to the 40 times larger than their gravitational attraction. This concludes this video.